Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Glad to have you all back for another exciting episode of Human Humane Architecture here from our sometimes evolved elevated islands of Hawaii. And today we're uh, looking back into something that we have uh, over the last couple of years, I should say, and that's elevate structure. And it's one, I say it's our most exotic uh, architectural invention about dignity and dwelling potentially on our islands and, and way beyond. And we have its father, Nathan Toothman, with us. Hi, Nathan. Hey, Martin. How are you? And you are, and you're not here, as one can tell. But uh, where is that, what we can see in the background picture? Um, well, I, I'm in California. Um, I'm not sure exactly which picture you have, but uh, I, I'm in the in the Bay Area. Yeah, you are. And if we bring uh, slide number one uh, here, that is uh, when we visited you last time. And we was actually me physically being over there. And this is just uh, one of these, uh, you know, um, wonderful moments sort of captured uh, you and your family, your daughter up there in your treehouse, as some would oversimplify and call elevate structure. So let's, uh, and please, you guys go back and revisit if you don't quite know what Elevate is. We've actually been doing two shows, the very least. And so ever since then, we want to now update everyone and ourselves on what has been happening to Elevate ever since. So if we go to the slide number two, uh, the next couple of slides are going to show that Elevate was on tour quite a bit on the road, like a, uh, on, with a rock band and uh, having many shows and many gigs uh, one after another. Where was this one here on, on slide two, Nathan? Uh, that was in Los Angeles for uh, uh, Sean White Air and Style event. It's a music and snowboarding festival. And so it was the brand activation for the company Boxed Water is better. Mm -hmm. And, and I would say, you know, using this uh, analogy of, of the rock world, I think, uh, you know, Elevate is a good groupie that is loyal to, you know, its idol, and but then again is very sort of versatile in, in adjusting to the changing needs and to the changing locations and the changing sort of audiences. If we can go to the next slide, number three, there's another impression here, which is that the same event or was that another one? No, this is in Las Vegas um, for the Burning Man Art Car Festival. Um, so this is, um, you know, a bunch of art cars that are taken to Burning Man. They, they brought them all together um, into this giant parking lot sponsored by Lyft. And so community came in and engaged with the, the vehicles. And so they wanted our structure there to be, be part of that. We should take a chance to greet our friend uh, Christian Beck here at this point, who I think was at the Burning uh, Man event as well. Have you, have you met him there? Or, I mean, you met him before, but I'm not sure. If this time. Yeah, we, we met here in, in the Bay Area, um, and then I know you went to Burning Man, but we haven't been to Burning Man there personally yet. This is just uh, outside of that. So, so hi, Christian, by the way. And we, we got to do a show about your crazy friction welding uh, with dowels at some time soon. But let's go back uh, on the road with Elevate, the next picture here. This, this is the lift sort of association that you can see here and, and Elevate sort of in a condition that is still uh, familiar to us from the last time we visited. But the next couple of slides are going to show it in, in one of your favorite settings and one of your biggest fans and, and mentors uh, of Elevate. Go to the next picture, number five, please. Who and where is that, Nathan? Uh, this is in Las Vegas on the Zappos headquarters in their central courtyard. So they, they purchased three structures. Uh, this um, was it springtime delivered in the summer and so this is being used at a brand summit uh, so a lot of the brands that Zappos works with uh, all came in for this kind of big corporate uh, conference and so that's the image you see there mm -hmm. and we see a couple more if we go to six here we can see another impression and, and again elevate is a very social 
character and beast, right? Is is uh, likes to hang out, likes to be friendly, like to befriend people, and people befriend under it very sort of almost naturally, right? Because the circular nature of elevate is very very is inviting, right? And you sit at a round table, so to speak. You have something above you that gives a certain sense of shading, but also gives a certain limit to the sky, so you feel comforted and sort of cozy, but not trapped. Is that all correct to say? Yeah, and it helps helps bring people together. So Zappos is all about culture and bringing people together, and so these structures help facilitate that. Yeah. And, and you know, from a formal point of view, and I hate to be a formalist that I want to be the least, but here it's obviously there, there's sort of hollow donut circle of the structure, and with them sort of repeating sort of the stamped out circle is, is quite fitting. And then, you know, sort of the, the additional sort of islands, the sort of um, astroturf islands here that were made is, is quite a um, pleasing uh, composition here as for a social event. So the next picture gives us uh, just another view. But if we, if we jump to six here, again, um, uh, the next, not going back, but uh, going one, oh, eight, I mean, not sorry, yeah, number eight here. You can see that Elevate is, is very flexible. It can, and I, you know, we tested this out a year ago in your front yard. Uh, what happens if you split Elevate in half and how that sort of works. And again, if people haven't seen the previous shows, you don't come from architecture, you come from engineering. You're a nuclear naval engineer, so sort of figuring things out scientifically is your nature, but you're very experimental and sort of cutting a, a circular sort of self-supporting system in, in half is sort of quite ambitious, but you're never too shy to try out things, right? So here is sort of, you know, split in half, elevates, forming another constellation. Yeah, this is a um, request from Zappos. They wanted the structures to roll around. Um, and so we hadn't really thought about, about that, but we really liked the idea because it allowed them to really tailor it to different events and keep the structures in the courtyard and not have to move them out. So uh -huh. it's uh, really flexible for um, all the different events that they have in this space. And then, you know, similar with the half tree, that, that was kind of their idea too that we accommodated, and it just opens up a lot more um, options. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, just great flexibility that we didn't really mm -hmm. envision originally. And last picture of that sort of sequence here is the next one, um, which again is a big talking rock star and, and stage and, and being a groupie. And here Elevate is sort of uh, almost like a roadie and stands in the back. Again, the sort of half uh, cut thing is, is here in the back. So once again, just demonstrating that uh, Elevate is a great party animal and very sort of multifunctionally um, suited for various situations. But going to the next picture, number 10 here, is returning to, uh, and this is revisiting our previous shows, um, how Elevate evolved and continues to be evolving. And at the bottom right, um, I was sort of uh, categorizing it sort of in, in sort of um, school of thought terms and pointing out um, some of your sort of quiet mentors, and one of them um, is, is Bucky Fuller. And, and um, you then sort of, without me knowing, but recently sharing, um, you seem to have been inspired by Bucky, but as we were talking before the show, as it's the nature of a scientist and an engineer, not in a formal way, but in a performative way, to rethink uh, sort of the tree top part of Elevate. And if we jump to the slide 11 here, we can see what happened and explain this a little bit more to us, Nathan. Yeah, so um, we um, basically shortened down the top of it um, from what it, the earlier images you, you saw. Um, and then to keep it kind of at a waist level, and then we, we, we knew we needed a roof system over it. So the option that you'll see coming up is it's kind of like a convertible roof at, um, or like a cabana roof that comes across and retracts. Uh, and so the, the original idea for the dome was just to provide structural support for that. Um, but then it turned out to be a, a really you know, pleasing architectural feature you know, as well. 
And just, you know, we wanted to, we've got so many moving parts going on with Elevate, we wanted to then use some things that are already established and known. And so the geodesic dome is obviously, obviously well established. And so that's, um, you know, that's kind of why that was chosen. Yeah. And, and what looks almost like a little, the, the, the little cap that Jews wear on their bare heads, right? That little thing in the back, the fabric is also a very performative nature. Maybe explain that a little more in detail. Yeah, so um, the idea there was that you could put uh, the, the solar panels on that, um, you know, hexagonal shape, and then that the structure itself uh, being a circle, it could rotate to kind of follow the sun to chase it for maximum solar energy, and then also to shade the interior of the structure. And it also just created, like, um, it really enhanced the like, beauty of the geodesic dome. I always thought sometimes when you encompass the entire space with panels, the dome kind of loses its you know, prettiness. And so that was just kind of an experiment um, that we um, are, are working with that we, that we like to turn out well. And, and it, on the inside, is it, it gives a nice definition to the space and, um, you know, a fixed wall to put, you know, and roof system to put things on. Mm -hmm. But and, then the dome can be completely finished off as well. Mm -hmm. And that seems very Bucky-like because, again, you come from performance and that at the end creates form, but form is not at the beginning, form is at the end of the process. And to my knowledge, I think the Demaxian home, there is something, I think the big fan at the top is rotatable, but otherwise the geodesic domes, to my understanding, were never rotatable. So that's definitely, and it's like, you know, alluding to nature, not in a literal, but in a figurative way, it reminds me of the sunflower that has also sort of a similar photosynthetic kinetic nature by turning its head according to follow the sun, right? So it's doing the same thing. In a, in a performative way. Let's look at what happens at night uh, on the next picture here, which has always been, I mean, ever since I've been there about a year ago, it was sort of getting cold, but still nice days. And so hanging out at Elevate in the evening, watching a movie, having a glass of wine and uh, wine culture. I hope you were not too affected by the tragic wildfires up there. and. Um, but, but again, this is capturing just, you know, these notions of Elevate as being, um, you know, a, a nighttime animal as much as a daytime figure. Uh, we jump to the next picture, 13, uh, which, which again is like showing how, and we were talking about what kind, what the, the effect the dome has for the, or the, the, the grid of the dome has for the inhabitative nature, right? Maybe we should talk about that a little bit. I mean, what does the dome imply we were talking before? Yeah, it kind of, it helps def define the space. Um, yeah, the, the tall ceilings really make it, um, you know, really expansive, really uplifting. It kind of draws your eye upwards. Um, and it, it kind of provides almost like a, a backdrop for the stars above um, while still giving you a, a sense of space. And, and so it, it really turned out to be like a, a real powerful feature. In, in nighttime, it really definitely yeah. kind of comes alive, especially as the, the um, wood members are, are lit up in mm -hmm. different form. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I mean, that's why we make like observatories, you know, where we simulate the the orbit and the skies, and we have the grid lines that help us locate the stars, right? So there's a lot of sort of this cosmic, you know, alluding in a certain way, but again, in a very abstract way, people can see in it whatever they want. And in, in any case, it's, it's way better or evolved from that sort of chopped off, almost like Baroque nature of the previous edition, right? Where it was just a horizontal roof, and this is how the people in the Baroque cut their trees to rather rigid, mostly, you know, square shapes. But here again, just opening it up, giving more clearance to stand. You can also, I'm working on a show with DeSoto that we call the um, air-cooled mobile and immobile, which is looking at VWs, the vintage ones, and sort of, you know, which were air-cooled and, and air uh, ventilated and the architecture at the same time, and there are the pop-up, you know, roofs of the Westphalia, um, you know, V-Dub uh, buses. So there, there's a lot of uh, a multitude of inspirations and, and analogies going on. And so let's jump to the next picture, number 14. That is also the permanent background feature, feature that shows very well how it evolved and how 
comfort it, comfortable it is to hang out. And it also shows the little picture at the top right shows the elevated nature and the, you know, the, the trunk of elevate uh, being um, as it used to be a, a hybrid of uh, circulation, vertical circulation as shower and, and building systems, right? Just like in the, in the natural tree trunk, all the systems are collapsed into that one vertical uh, thing, right? Yeah, we use the, the center as the access, um, which is really nice. It, it creates an experience when you come up into that space and people are there. It's like you're welcoming them in in a unique way. And then um, it's, it's only 20 square feet, so it's small, but we can still fit a small shower, sink, and toilet in that space. And so, you know, it, it turned out to not, you know, not a space for everybody as far as, you know, you know bathroom space, but, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. And um, it just really creates a, a great way to, to come up into the structure. And, of course, we have other ways to do, like, spiral staircases and things like that. But uh, it's turned out to, to work really nice. And just um, – the size of it, it's about 15 feet in diameter. It creates a nice space for, for talking, for having meetings, for um, you know, interacting with people. So it's not too big, not too small. Mm -hmm. And as Elevate is evolving, uh, what, what do you have in the cooking next? And this gets us to picture 15, the next one. Yeah, so this is showing, um, this is kind of what inspired the, the dome actually was um, a platform for camping that you then though had a canopy roof that you could either open up or close depending on the weather conditions. And uh, just, it just creates a lot of flexibility in a structure and the ability to, to kind of face a shaded side to the sun in the summer and a transparent um, side in the winter. Uh, so it really helps with um, solar gain or, or avoiding the solar gain. It just creates a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're really excited about this. This It's kind of like a convertible house. Um, and so, you know, different forms of material can create different insulation values and, you know, d you know, different experiences and cost ranges, but it just creates flexibility in a, in a house that really you don't, you know, have today. No, it's very, very cool and very, I mean, it's an all-season, uh, you know, dwelling as the image on the right shows the easy breezy summer condition and then when it gets colder on the left side, you know, um, depending on how far you into the winter or into the spring and um, again, if you need solar gain, you know, you turn it with a transparent and it becomes a greenhouse and basically, you know, harvest past the solar energy and then when you come into the late spring and, you know, into the uh, fall where sort of the interstitial climate uh, situation, then you can, once the sun starts to be hot, but it's still too cold outside, you just turn the, the shading side over. So it's a very clever bioclimatic, um, you know, nature that, that Elevate um, sort of embodies. Um, let's get to the next picture here, which is um, 16. This is getting back to what excites me the most. And I, ever since, you know, I, I left about a year ago, I was bugging you with that over and over again. And it's just sort of taking advantage of the um, sort of timeshare kinetic aspect of it that at the daytime, it could be that, you know, magic tree house for the kids, your kids and their friends. And at nighttime, uh, when your kids more or less should go to sleep, uh, which I do rather late, as I always enjoyed them hanging out with a family as much and long as they wanted. And then, but if they go to sleep, then the uh, urban nomads come home, and they're formerly called homeless, from their strolling over the day, and they come home and they take down the segmented pieces of Elevate, and um, the the right bottom part is is the is the footing, is the platform, the the the, the floor platform, and the the piece on the left is is the floor and the wall and the ceiling piece, and it very naturally is uh, uh, laying on its uh, back C form that you then only have to put like a typical upside down V shaped tent over it to make a very versatile um, you know temporary dwelling. Um, uh, um, out of it. And then let's see how that would look in its entire composition on the next slide, number 17. 
uh, which again is has its its multi purpose and its multi duty. So it isn't just for one. This is this is sort of a display version of it, right? This could be a more mercantile uh, version of it, um, where it's on shows and and has a lot of shelf space and you know has a lot to show, and again um, could then easily be fold back into its sort of uh, smaller footprint um, tree canopy condition. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So let's jump to the next 18, which shows a little bit the spacious feel of it, uh, sort of the procedure and, and processing through the nature. And you can already see sort of in, in implied lines how the temporary dwellers are uh, inhabiting it, which we see in the next picture, number 19, uh, more. Uh, and here they would be. It's almost like little caterpillars in their cocoons. They're ready to become uh, butterflies and, and, and fly and leave. And, and sort of in a metaphorical way, I think this is the way that the original idea of giving home to the ones in the most need is like that, you know, through hosting them, you know, you can help them get back on their feet and finally spread their wings again and, and be on their own. I think that's a very, very you know, very close to the nature of the show, human humane uh, architecture in humanity and humility. And next uh, slide 20 um, shows again that sort of preferred and desired nighttime condition of being that home for the houseless. Um, we have a couple minutes left and want to jump to the next slide that uh, certainly, um, you know, wasn't your most dream f to have me show it, but um, I want to show it anyways, because it's like at some point you say, hey, Martin, look what happened to uh, our initial prototype uh, out here in Kailua at the quarry where the, uh, you know, people who are using it basically took off that uh, very uh, crazy beard, uh, fuzzy uh, green screen skin, which you see at the bottom right, and transformed it into something rather uh, ordinary, uh, to say the least. And, you know, I, I, it took me a little while to get, get over it, but I have to say that sort of, you know, initial sort of bad taste uh, has vanished. And I'm, I'm thinking if it shows anything, it shows the versatility and, and being undogmatic nature of Elevate, that you know, you're not telling people what to do. People can do with it whatever they want. And if they want the ordinary house elevated, I mean, this has some artistic merit as well. It could be like a modern Gordon Meta Clark installation or something like that. And, and, and so anyways, um, I, I think, it, it, once again, it shows Elevate is, is, is a creature that depending on where you plant it, uh, and what, whatever different the conditions are, it could become many different things. Uh, going to the next slide, number 22. And it, in your case, it becomes that where, you know, your, your kids have always been part of the creation and they're part of the creators. And, 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 and here you can see how the dome came together and how, how your, your children were part of the design team. And, and as children are, F more fearless and, and less afraid of things, I think that helps the continuously sort of re rejuvenating uh, recreation of Elevate tremendously that, that sort of this fresh and, and virgin uh, enthusiasm of your kids is, is always um, part of the, of the development. I, I really appreciate it. I mean, these are pictures you didn't send me as the final pictures, but you sent them to me in between and saying, hey, Martin, you know, here are some updates. And, and I just uh, put these in. And then uh, the next slide here, number, yeah, this one here is, is something that you show that for sort of the weather shell, you don't need to do what the current user of the prototype, the Shrek prototype does it, but you can use something as simple as a tent to give you the necessary rain and, and wind protection. And you don't need to cover the whole thing. I think this is a very clever thing. And next uh, picture here, um, you know, we've been working together for a while and obviously have been become so synced that here in our newest um, Primitiva 2 development here, we're using the same strategy 
that within a given framework, um, there is dwelling in a more nomadic nature. And you can even see the same tent in the same, in the same color here uh, reoccurring. So we're once again always and forever on the, on the same page. And I want to um, close with uh, the last picture here, number 25, is um, encouraging you as much as my dear son and my daughter-in-law here who um, are also educated and um, degreed uh, engineers, him uh, automotive uh, engineering and management. And just like you, he said, I don't want to become a part of a corporate system that's already invented. I want to be an inventor and creator myself and design something that I truly believe in. And I want to design it all the way through as a business model and as a, as a construct. Um, and, and so they did their uh, shaved ice business in this prototypical trailer. And, and both of you are my heroes. And I believe that that's the way to go. And I, I totally believe that uh, the success will be with you guys, that there will be customers, and in your case, uh, investors and developers who will see that genius nature of Elevate and will buy into it uh, literally and, and figuratively. So once again, I cannot thank you enough for being such a great encouragement, inspiration for my son and myself and, and being the most uh, emergingly evolved exotic creature with Elevate <coughs> on this island that uh, is homegrown here and, and hopefully is, um, is coming back uh, sometime soon. So um, yeah, well, thanks so much, Martin, for for covering it. You're interested in it, and um, you know, just you know, these things, and, and you know, it really helps me understand that you know from from what you see in it, the perspective, and so we really really appreciate it. Yeah, and that was when I was talking more than I anyways talk. You said, Martin. I'm, first of all, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, so get better. But you also said, you know, I think the pictures <laughs> at you, and please. You give me feedback on what you saw, so that's that's what I did. And so, uh, thank you. Uh, keep us updated, and we will keep you guys updated on Elevate uh, frequently and periodically. And until then, please stay elevatedly exotic, exotically elevated. See you next week. Bye bye.